Hi, I'm Ashish Tripathi. I'm the CEO of Tisa Labs. And I'm, I'm going to start off by making some very bold claims. And since we have already published the science, we have a US patent, we have two studies going on with NHS, I will be telling you how our technology is possible. There are three global firsts that we claim. This is the first all-cancer blood test. I speak with some knowledge of the topic. There are 200 different types of cancer, 3,000 subtypes of cancer. We detect all of them from a blood sample. Not just that, we detect it earlier than known technologies because we can detect it when it is PET negative. That's stage zero, not stage one. Not only can we detect it at that stage with high sensitivity, we can tell you which cancer it is. This is breast, this is ovarian, this is lung, this is colorectal, straight from a blood test. That's claim one. Claim two, this is the first prognostic test for cancer. We can tell you you do not have cancer, and you will not get cancer for the next one year because we know the pace at which these markers grow. If you're within a safe zone, we know that the fastest cancer doesn't go from here to a tumor stage in one year. You see the use case, it's like a blood test, blood test that all of us will do once a year, and we will either catch cancer at stage one or before when it is infinitely more curable. That's claim two. Claim three, and this is a big one for oncologists, we can give you the mutation and dysfunctional pathway readings that you get from a biopsy of a tumor tissue, right? Uh, why is this important? Latest research in the US shows that as soon as you do a biopsy, you speed up the activity of the tumor. But more importantly, sometimes the driver mutation is coming from a second tumor. So if I've done a biopsy of this tumor, I don't get those readings. I can give you the readings of all of them straight from a blood sample. Now, when you hear this, the first question that has to be playing in your mind is, what's the science? I'll come to that in a minute. But more importantly, why would we make this breakthrough sitting out of India? We're not magicians. We're not the smartest people in the world. We just got plain and simple lucky. We were a drug company that was working on a cancer drug. While studying the pathways, we realized the drug is acting on a small population of stem cells. When we delved in, we realized there's an epigenetic change, a mutation, happening on the stem cell that is creating a cancer stem cell. The cancer stem cell creates cancer cells. A billion cancer cells form a tumor. Once a tumor forms, it sheds its outer layers, which are called CTCs and CTDNA. Every liquid biopsy company that you're aware of was essentially looking at this. CTCs, CTDNA, cell-free RNA, all resultant markers of the tumor that come after the tumor has formed we had just stumbled onto a causative marker that shows up in the blood a good 12 to 18 months before the tumor even forms. Now, when we found this, that this is the best part about it, that because it's a natural cell, we get a reading for non-cancer. So we get a basal reading for all of us. We get an elevated reading when something is going wrong in a primary organ. We get a still elevated reading above a threshold level once cancer has formed. Right? Now, why is that important? Uh, when you're looking at a CTC-based approach, the absence of CTCs in the blood indicates non-cancer. Absence of evidence is not the same as evidence of absence. We get a reading for non-cancer. Now, when we had found this, we did a 1,000-patient study, which got published in Oxford Academia's Stem Cell Journal just three and a half months back. We were very, obviously, being a scientific company, we're very proud of our journal articles. Right? It was retweeted by Harvard professors, NHS professors, University of Paris professors, because um, uh, this, is, this is what the results were in summary. Or it was a blinded study. All we got was a blood sample with a code in it. Right? There were 500, with simple design, 500 non-cancer patients, 500 cancer patients. From this, we detected each and every non-cancer patient. Please understand that we get a reading for non-cancer. We detected the fourth stage, the third stage, the second stage, and the first stage cancer patients. And we detected seven people in that high-risk category that we predicted were at imminent threat of cancer. We followed the patients up, and we were able to show that they actually developed cancer. Now, this is perhaps the most interesting slide. When I say that this works on all cancers, no 1,000 patient study covers all cancers. There are 3,000 subtypes of cancer. There are six different types of breast cancer alone, right? Now, but what fascinated the doctors was all the big ones were there. Breast, ovarian, lung, leukemia, prostate, pancreatic, colon. It worked on solid cancers. It worked on blood cancers. It worked on soft tissue sarcomas, right? What's still playing in your mind is what's the science? 
There are two tests. There's an HRC test and an all-organ biopsy test. HRC is a pure screening test, right? When I do this test, we are looking at 10 to 15 markers. When you get a zero to two reading, we just tell you go home, come back next year, because you have no cancer, but you will not get cancer for the next one year. Two to six, our inflammatory markers have been activated in some primary organ. What it says is that something is going wrong in a primary organ, right? At this point, depending on how high you are, we tell you to come back within the next six to nine months. Six to 10 is when we get worried, because this is when a, a mutation is happening in a primary organ, and the cancer cells are starting to proliferate, but the physical tumor has not formed, because a physical tumor needs a billion cells, right? And if you're 10 plus, we just tell you, go do a PET scan and get a confirmatory test done. The all organ biopsy is an even more interesting test. From a blood sample, we can tell you what is the primary organ. This is lung, this is breast, right? Or this is colorectal. We can tell you what is the secondary organ. This is lung cancer, which is metastasized into bone. We can tell you the mutations, altered expressions, dysregulated pathways. How? Your body, my body, has 37.5 trillion cells. There are 200 different classes of, your, of cells. Your brain cells are very different to your blood cells, very different to your skin cells. 50 billion cells die every day and are being replaced, right? Now, core to the breakthrough, and I'm gonna try and explain something very complex as basically as I can, right? Core to this breakthrough was detecting this particular pluripotent stem cell in the blood. The, bl the cell itself was not found by us. It was found by an American in an American university. He had found it next to uh, uh, the tumor cells. He had even hypothesized that these cells are growing into the tumor cells, but think about it, that has no diagnostic value. A small cell sitting next to a tumor telling you there's a tumor close by. If you can zoom in and see the cell, zoom out and see the tumor. The tumor itself is so small, you don't see it, right? The breakthrough, what our scientists did, was realizing that we can find it in the blood. But what does this cell do in your body and my body? Let's say I do this, just crashed myself, killed a thousand cells. These cells, like the 50 billion cells that are dying in my body today, need to be replaced. What's the mechanism? This particular stem cell, and you can actually literally see it in the, under a microscope, it forms a small cap, a big bottom, separates out into two cells. What it is doing is it's creating a replica of itself. So it is also an immortal cell. It creates a progenitor. That progenitor is different in different organs. In the brain, it's a neuronal stem cell. In the blood, it's a hematopoietic stem cell. In the ovaries, it's an ovarian stem cell, right? It then starts the process of multiplying. One cell becomes two, two becomes 10, 10 becomes 100. Why? Because the body is just giving you a huge order. 50 billion cells need to be produced today. It's multiplying. At the end of which, the terminal differentiation process starts. Just like a baby changes into a toddler, then a teenager, then an adult, this goes through A to B, B to C, C to D. At D, my dermal cell has just been replaced, okay? It will now get two memos. You will, you will die. You will live for 28, 29 days, right? And then it will die, it will go through apoptosis, it is then replaced. It will also get one more memo. You will not change into anything else. Right? So this is changing into this, this is changing into this, but that one will just age, it will not change. The breakthrough that we realized that what a pluripotent stem cell means is that not only can it grow into every tissue and every organ in the body, it can also grow into every tumor in every tissue in every organ in the body. And the core to it was we realized because of an exposure to carcinogen. I see people having a lot of plastic bottles, uh, uh, water in plastic bottles, there's a lot of microplastics there or you get exposed to radiation, right? But effectively, or genetic predisposition, we have a predisposition to certain diseases. But what happens is that this cell gets an epigenetic change which we are able to measure, and it creates what is a cancer stem cell. The cancer stem cell, think of this guy as Jekyll, this guy is Hyde, right? Jekyll was the good guy that would actually stay quiet till demand was created, and then it would asymmetrically divide. Hyde, on the other hand, starts to misbehave. It just starts creating replicas of itself. And each of these replicated cells starts the process that I'm gonna tell you. It creates a progenitor, but that is also cancerous. It then multiplies at a furious pace, and once, because this is where mutations are happening, right, it creates a blocked differentiation. What does that mean? A was supposed to change to B, then C, then D. What happens is A grows to B, but at B, it doesn't change into anything else. It just starts to proliferate. Right? These are cancer cells. Now, effectively, 
these cancer cells feed into a tumor. A tumor is nothing but a billion cells of cancer coming together and forming a mothership. Once the mothership forms, it sheds its outer layers, which are called CTCs, and when the CTCs break, CTDNA, cell-free RNA. Every liquid biopsy company was essentially looking at this end of the puzzle. We realized that we had found something that is showing up in the blood that is starting the process 12 to 18 months before the tumor forms. Now, why is this important? This is called a Gumpertsian model. It was coined by a British scientist called Benjamin Gumpertz, who said cancer goes through three phases. Early phase, rapid expansion phase, and then the plateau phase. And he said the tragedy of cancer today is we only understand the disease in the plateau phase from a billion to a trillion cells. What does that mean? A billion cells is a one cubic centimeter tumor. It's a small tumor in any cancer. And by the time you reach a trillion cells, fourth stage, you're dead, right? The point is a billion cells do not grow in a day. We are able to track the disease in this phase. We are able to detect the disease in this phase. Now, uh, just to put it in perspective, we do not bag competition for the simple reason that uh, anyone that has suffered with cancer uh, themselves or in the family will know that if you are saving even one life, I think you're doing a great service, right? Because the only real solution is early detection. And the reality is that there is a famous American company that actually published, and I was personally present at ASCO, where they claimed that for 12 cancers, they were getting 18% success at stage, uh, at stage one in 2020 at ASCO. And if you read the blogs, every oncologist said, we don't need a blood test to confirm cancer at stage four, we need it at stage one. At stage one with 18% success, it is non-translational. They went back and did a very big NHS study. By the way, we have two studies going on with NHS. And the NHS doctors have gone on record. In fact, just last year, NHS has published a paper that no liquid biopsy company is getting more than 20% success at stage one, more than 30% uh, at stage one and stage two combined. We get 93% at stage one, right? But why is that? Another no, well-known fact, because it's in the public domain, take a look at the paper, they took 80 to 90 ml of blood. You don't do a blood donation when you do a blood test. Why are they taking 80, 90 ml of blood? Because blood is like a soup of DNA, right? All your healthy organs break down, your lung tissue breaks down, your liver breaks down, etc. In all the soup, you're hoping that there is at least one or two strands of tumor DNA, because as soon as I see it, I'll know I have cancer. The problem is, at stage one, it's not there, right? So what do you do? I can't see the needle in the haystack. Let me increase the size of the haystack. Take 80, 90 ml. And why stop there? My suggestion is take the whole 5.5 liters. Maybe you'll get accuracy this way, right? But my father, who's the scientist behind this, used to say that you try and find shortcuts when you haven't found the solution. The reality is they were looking at a resultant marker, CTCs, CTDNA, which comes after the tumor has formed we realize that if you look at a causative marker, you see it very clearly even before the tumor has formed. Now, uh, that's my contact details. We have uh, our clinical studies are getting finished um, in uh, April, May. Uh, these are two NHS studies that are going on. Uh, we are in talks with NIH. We are also talking to uh, uh, Abu Dhabi and a couple of other hospitals. Uh, if I can just, because I have a little bit of time, if I can just leave two specific thoughts for you. Cancer is a geometrically growing disease. One cell becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes 16, 16 becomes 256. What we call early detection is a, a one cubic centimeter tumor. Why? Because the way you confirm cancer is you do a PET scan. One cubic centimeter has a billion cells of cancer. The sad fact is that even at that stage, you do not detect cancer. Why? Because a PET scan is equal to radi is radioactive glucose. I inject it into myself. Because the tumor is growing so fast, it wants the sugar. And because it's radioactive, when I image, it shows up, right? But it, ha it is equal to 70,000 x-rays. It will cause cancer. So no doctor is telling you to do a PET scan every year. So you get sent for a PET scan when you have a symptom. And the symptoms come much later which is why even today, even in the West, even in US, UK, Europe, right? 50% of the cancers are detected at stage three, stage four. I remind you of the first slide that I put out, right? You, this is actually a weak disease, so long as you catch it early. You catch it late, it's a death sentence. 
What keeps us awake at uh, what makes us wake up is we believe that all 8 billion of us, if we do this test once a year, we will turn cancer into an early stage disease. But what is imp incumbent on us is that we need to make it uh, uh, cheaper and we need to actually increase the automation so that we can service more people. And of course, the clinical trials, which is what we are focusing on. Thank you. That's our story.